Hello, my lovelies. This is the Scarlet DM, and today I want to talk to you about tokens in Foundry VTT. Tokens are essentially your mini. They represent actors displayed in your scene. To create a token, drag any actor from the actor's directory onto the map. Double-clicking on the token with your left mouse button will bring up the token's character sheet. With your token selected by using the token controls tool on the left-hand side of your screen, you can move your token. You can also use the arrow keys. Holding left shift while scrolling the middle mouse button will rotate your token, while holding the left control key while scrolling the middle mouse button will rotate it in a smaller interval. You can select multiple tokens by clicking and dragging over them or selecting them one by one while holding the shift key. You can target a token by clicking on it with this button selected. Tokens that you have targeted will be marked for other players and some modules will have added functionality for targeted tokens. This button allows you to measure distances across the map by clicking and dragging. You can measure multiple directions by holding control and single clicking. You notice it will measure each line as well as the total distance. To undo a line, right click. Right clicking on your token will bring up several options. Starting with the top left, you can set your elevation. This will be displayed on top of your token if it is above zero. The next option brings up a token configuration menu, which we will go over soon. This button allows you to target the selected token. This button toggles whether or not the token is hidden. This is useful for DMs who want to hide NPCs from players. This button gives several condition options that you can select and deselect. This lets you keep track of multiple conditions in a token. Toggling this button will put the token into combat. As you can see, their name is displayed in the combat tracker. These values displayed on the top and bottom of the token are resources. In the token configuration menu, you can set which resources are displayed. Currently, the top number is representing this character's AC value, and the bottom number shows how many hit points it has. You can edit this directly by clicking on the field and either adding or subtracting a number. It will automatically reflect this information on the green health bar. All right, it's time to check out the token configuration settings. You can access this by right-clicking and selecting the gear or double right-clicking on the token. The first tab is pretty straightforward. You can set the token name and whether or not it will be displayed. Personally, I like to keep this off because sometimes I don't want the name of my token revealed right away, but it is completely up to you. This field lets you select a character sheet that the token is connected to. This is automatically set when you drag an actor onto the board, but you are able to change it if necessary. Link actor data tells Foundry if you want the represented actor's character sheet to be updated as you make changes to the token. If the token is representing a specific actor, such as a player or a named NPC, keep this checked. If the token represents an actor that you might have multiples of, like groups of NPCs that share a stat block, uncheck this. Token disposition will set which color border the token will have when selecting it. This can notify players whether or not a token is friendly, neutral, or hostile. In the Appearance tab, we can select the image of our token. By default, it will be the first image you select on the original character sheet, but you could change this here. Keep in mind that if you ever change the portrait of your character sheet, it will not change your token automatically. If you ever want to change your token image, this is where you need to do it. The dimensions show how many squares on the grid your token will occupy. This usually reflects the creature size listed in the character sheet, but you can change it here. The scale ratio will change the size of the token without changing the number of squares the token occupies. I like to use this to make a token appear larger or smaller without necessarily changing their creature size. You can also flip the image horizontally or vertically, select a color tint, and even change the token's opacity. On the next tab, we can set our token's vision. If the character has dark vision, you can set how many feet in the dim field. You can set the vision angle as well. By default, it is 360 degrees. But if you don't want your token to be able to see behind them without turning around, you can set this to 180 or even 90. The Light tab will allow you to set whether or not your token emits any kind of light. This is useful if your character is holding a torch or using the light cantrip. You can set the radius of both dim and bright light, choose the angle at which it is omitted, and even set a color to the light. Under the Light Animation tab, you can select one of several animations and set its speed and intensity. Under Advanced Options, you can get pretty specific with how the light communicates with the image on your scene. I encourage you to play around with these settings and find something that you like. Finally, we have the Resources tab. 
You can select who sees these resources and which specific resources are being displayed. In order to have any of your changes saved, you must hit Update Token. One last thing, you can access the token configuration menu directly from the character sheet. If you access it from the character sheet listed in the actors directory, you'll notice that it says prototype token. If you access your character sheet by double clicking the token, it only says token. If you want to make permanent changes to the character sheet that affect all future tokens, then any changes must be done to the prototype token. Otherwise, the changes made will not affect any other tokens created for that actor. If you have made changes to a token that you would like reflected in future versions, access the prototype token and with the token that has the desired changes selected, hit Assign Token. This will update the actor's default token with any changes that you might have made. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped and if it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to suggest future videos, feel free to join my Discord. We have a thriving community and I would love to hear your input. I am also working on a Patreon for D&D related art, music, and even opportunities to play D&D with me. Have an excellent day and I will see you in the next one.